Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. What I do know, I'm still Angie, this is still 4F Beauty, this is a wig, and hopefully you're watching me in black and white right now. You will have seen from the thumbnail, the title, and if you've read any of it, the description. And I'm finally back, 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 back again. My phone makes no noise until I'm filming. It's great. As I said, I'm back, 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 back again, just like Alyssa Edwards. Only this time, it's the Kaleidos Flower Punk palette that I am playing with today. So, if you want to find out exactly how well, or otherwise, this performed, and of course what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, then my friend, you have the best seat in the house. Sammy is here to confirm. It's time to grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and get comfy. Because here it comes. Hey, my lovelies. Right, okay, I am back. Um, in more ways than one. I'm back from the intro that I haven't filmed yet. I'm also back to filming, which I haven't been able to do for a few weeks, which is why you had a gap in films, for which I apologise. Um, I've been on the struggle bus, um, not just in terms of my usual arthritis and fibro pain, but I'm really, really struggling with my cellulitis at the moment. Um, I'm going to put a couple of pictures up. If you're squeamish, look away. I'll tell you when it's safe to look back. Right, you looked away? Okay. These pictures um, show you the front of my shins with the cellulitis and an open area which is taking forever to heal. And it's because the fibro has caused my legs to swell, all that additional liquid in my capillaries and everything because there's a hole at the front of my leg just keep pouring out so I'm having to keep them strapped with absorbent padding on all the time which yeah, makes the skin, you know yourself if, if you've had a plaster on and you take it off how the skin feels underneath yeah imagine being strapped from knee to ankle 24-7 it's not good. Um, and the other one shows you the side of my shin where I'd taken a tumble because of pain. I went dizzy and just went down, scraped my leg on the side of my drive, which is a raised drive. Um, and as you can see, that's that's got a, a rather large area which is starting to scab over, but again, all of that leaks as well. So. Right, and the pictures are gone. You are safe to look back if you were squeamish. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, anyone who's had cellulitis will know from seeing those just how much pain I've been in recently. Um, but suffice to say, it's significant. I've got a high pain threshold. I've lived with pain 24-7 for... A number of years now so for this to knock me off the way it did it, it shows you how just how high the pain is but getting on to more fun things this arrived I wanted to show you just how well it's packed because when it arrives it arrives just in a padded envelope like this and you think that's come all the way from I think it's China that they're based and you think and you've only got a padded envelope around it. But then you open the box up 
and you have a thank you for your support with a QR code and, and a IG name tag code thing. And you open it, this bit here and you then have a super thick sponge inside that runs along the bottom and covers almost completely the top of the palette. So you then take the palette out Let me just put this down because I shall need to refer to that in my intro. So then you take the palette out and the palette is in bubble wrap. And then it's in this cardboard sleeve which has actually got cutouts. And then this bit folds down, the sides fold out and out comes your palette. Much easier for those of us with nails than trying to get into a typical palette where you have to open one end of it. And then, as with, well, let me show you the palette first. The mirror is painted on on the front. And on the back, you have spot lamination on the two butterflies and metallic lettering at the back here. A radically verdant vision of lush greens and soft earthy tones. Makeup on the right side. And this, in the same way as Inglot, this lid comes straight off. Now, if you are a bit of a klutz, you can end up dinking your shadows. So, speaking as a bit of a klutz, the easiest way to remove a palette lid that comes off completely is not to just try and pull it off or put it open like you would do normally. It's to twist it sideways. It then detaches from the magnet and comes off nice and easily. Now, I have already swatched that, that's why there's a little bit of loose pigment at the bottom there, but that's the colours as if you didn't already know. And that is the back of the mirror. So yeah, the easiest way to do it is either to slide it, but then you risk dinking, or, which is what I do, get a hold of it in the middle twist it to a 45 and then to a 90 and it just comes straight off because it's then the magnets are in each corner okay so that's the easiest way to do it without knackering your shadows okay you're welcome <clears throat> right uh, I will have at some point put Swatches, that's the word my brain's looking for. Swatches up here. Yeah, the fibre is still bad. <clears throat> that hasn't got any better, trust me. <coughs> you can see that the first two shimmers, the Aloe Cove and Stained Glass, are slightly more of a topper shimmer they don't have a lot of base pigment to them this is quite useful in some respects because it means you can layer it over for example if I was to use this this one here this peach soju and then top it with that you would see this shade through that um, the only shimmer really that has a base pigment to it is this one here um, but we've seen that before in their Sashimi City and, oh god, what was the lavender one called? Lavender Skies, was it? Luna Lavender? 
something like that. Anyway, um, this remains a teaching channel, so I will still be doing very close up on my eyes so that you can see what's happening regardless of, of how bad your eyesight is and how small the screen is that you're watching me on. This does mean that you will occasionally get a lovely glimpse of my widow's peak, the front of my hairline. You're welcome. Um, enjoy, have fun. It's just, for me, it's a small price to pay for actually being able to see what's happening on my lid. Um, I'm going to insert a clip in just a moment which talks you through the difference between deep set eyes and hooded lids because a lot of people still get that mixed up. It's understandable, the way that makeup wears on those types of lid is very similar, but the application method to get the most longevity and the best initial impact are slightly different. That again will be very up close and personal, just my eyes on screen so you can easily see what I'm talking you through. Okay. Once I have finished talking you through that, I'll be back to apply some of these pigments to my eyelids and to waffle away at you as is my usual behaviour. So, here's your clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crown Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Crown Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well. So you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover the visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid 
tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same mount lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Good lord, look at those dark circles. Can you tell I'm not sleeping very well? Yeah. Right, I'm going to start off with a very small blending brush. Um, this is the Voldemorphy 506, if you're wondering. And I'm going to start off going into, I think, chlorophyll, which is this glorious chartreuse colour. There's a lot of kick up in the pan. As you can see, I've just tapped back off again. Now, as always, I'm going to use the uh, Viennese Waltz method of blending, which is natural turns towards the nose, a flicker when we get there, and reverse turns to come back again. The reason I do this, rather than relying on the windscreen wiper, is because I'm 47 years old, I've lost over 200 pounds. The skin on my eyelids moves. But I know teenagers who've always been slim that have the same issue. And when you do the windscreen wiper, if you do have any movement to your lids, that's when you can get your lid folding over and that's when you get those telltale white stripes. Dead giveaway. So, I'm going to start sort of roughly at the edge of the iris here. And just gently start blending this shade in. So this is what I love about my Crow and Pebble primer. You don't have to set it. So you don't have to make that payoff between setting it and being able to blend straight away or not setting it and having to pat the cutter on because obviously if you do set it first you do tend to lose I've just dropped the brush and managed to wipe the pigment all down my blue top remember what I said about being a klutz? As I was saying, if you do set your eyelids, you can actually lose a certain amount of um, colour payoff, particularly on neon colours or pastels that have a white base. And do the same thing this side. I always do both eyes together, well, not together one at a time, but you know what I mean because there are times when my fibro can make my eyelids swell and puff up in, in various places and there are times when I do my usual shape because obviously I know which shapes to do for my eyes to make them look the same 
but then I look at it and one will be higher than the other because of puffiness and if I'd already put all the colours on I wouldn't necessarily know which colour needed adjusting right, I'm just going to clean the brush off on a clean washcloth I don't use colour switches, they're too harsh on your brushes way too harsh on your brushes Alright, and now I'm going to dip into Mint Fever, which is that beautiful light teal. And as always, I start off by blending it with the first colour that's down, and then bring the colour out. Um, for me, I don't know whether it's just my eyes, whether it's just a psychological thing with me, I don't know, but I have found that if I do that, I get a better blend than if I put it all down and then try and blend it in the middle sort of thing. So, bring this tea all the way out. I do struggle sometimes here and here on both eyes where I get very very dry patches and I can sometimes struggle to get pigment to stay put. If that happens I will show you how I deal with it. I'm just going back in without any pigment on the brush just to really soften the blend where the two meet and you can see it's it's giving me a bit of a punky green in the middle which I quite like. Sort of a baby's nappy pukey green. So how have you been doing in the two weeks that I've not actually had a film up? I'm so sorry it's taken me that long to actually be able to get back to filming again. I feel terrible leaving you that long without something new to watch. Although I suppose the benefit are there's, there's a reasonable amount of newbies that won't have seen some of my older stuff, so perhaps it's given you a chance to, to catch up on some of those. Older palettes, older collabs, um, you know, my little mini tutorials that I do where I talk you through things like winged liner and eyebrow shaping and all that sort of thing. I do hope you've been having a good or as good a time as possible. What's happening where you are right now in terms of lockdowns and restrictions and things? Uh, I'm just going to dip back into the chlorophyll just Get a good blend here. Yes, I like that. Um we start, we're starting to uh, see some easement here in the UK now. We can actually um, go into a restaurant and have a meal in a restaurant now, which is nice. Uh, not that I've done that yet. Now, which of the two deeper colours do I want to go in with? We know it's going to be the green, don't we? This is me. It's going to be the green. So I'm going to go into Earthship, which is the, the khaki green on the end. Honestly, when you feel, when you run your fingers across the mats, they are just the softest, butteriest formula that I've felt for a long, long time. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a circle 
movement just at the end here just to start getting my pigment down and then gently bring it across I think I need to go for a slightly bigger brush let's change this for a Voldemorphy M139 See what I mean about the dry patch that I get here? It's literally just grabbed hold of that green and it's like I'm not letting go. But it's fine, we'll just carry it down onto the outer third of the lid and just give it a bit of a buff. As always, I do my little flicky line up so that if I'm not able to do eyeliner that day I still get the effect of a wing yeah I get the feeling knowing my mother-in-law I'm fully expecting her to say I've booked us a table to go for a meal she has a habit of doing that she just books a table without checking whether You've got anything else planned for that time? <laughs> but um, it will be nice to go out for a family meal again. Hubby, brother in law, mother in law, you know. I do miss his grandma. She's been gone a couple of years now. She was such a card, she really was. Absolutely loved that woman. I like how that looks. Yeah, so what's happening where you are? You know, are you allowed to go into restaurants yet or are you still, you know, takeaway service or I mean, we started off where you could you could go to a pub, but you had to sit outside. You couldn't sit in the pub. Um, and then they, uh, so you know, pubs with beer gardens could open. And pubs with. No outside space were a little bit screwed to be honest. Because a lot of motors and pubs don't have any outside space. Particularly the ones, you know, in the town itself. Or, you know, if they do have outside space, it's significantly smaller than the actual pub so it limits the number of patrons they can have on site sort of thing and obviously you know when it still costs you the same to run the pub where you've got one person in it or a hundred people in it but uh, yeah we can now start going into pubs and restaurants and things now so Uh, to be honest, I'm kind of, I've, I've spent so long not going to pubs that I just prefer sitting indoors with some alcohol that's considerably cheaper to buy from the supermarket. I need to get back into the habit of going out and of course my social anxiety over the last, you know, if you ask my social anxiety what did it think of 2020, it was a perfect year for it. Cause couldn't go anywhere, couldn't do anything. Didn't have to talk to anybody. I 
but I don't know whether see in my mirror this is not patchy uh, neither is this side but in the viewfinder it is showing up as patchy I do get that sometimes that's the problem with HD cameras they show every blooming thing right I'm going to use a flat brush again this is a Voldemorphy one but it's out of a set and they never actually tell you what it is when it's in a set which is really unhelpful but it's flat and small uh, now what colour do I want to do on the lid actually what I might do is go back in with the smaller brush going to peach so jewel get my little mirror so I can see what I'm doing because my viewfinder is way too far away from me at the moment I'm just going to pop this peach so jewel on the lid which is obviously a matte just buff it in with the green. Do that both sides. Now this eye I do have issues with. Um, I've got super super deep creasing just here from where this eye was pulled around when I was a kid. And I mean like five years old. So I do have to break my own rule about not stretching the lid out. But when I put the shimmer on, I'll explain to you how I do it so that I cause as little damage as possible to the lid. Clean that brush off. <clears throat> Now as always you never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush, you always wet the brush after you've added the pigment to it. I'm just going to use an old setting spray. You can use anything, any, any liquid, you can use a priming spray, you can use a moisturising spray, um, you know, like, like a MAC or a Mario Badescu. You can use setting spray, finishing spray, you can even just save a bottle and just put fresh water in it each day that you're doing your makeup. Right, so I'm going to use this flat brush and I'm going to go into stained glass. And this is one of the shimmers that doesn't have a lot of base pigment to it. very soft formula, similar in texture in terms of getting it onto the brush as a Super Shock Shadow. So now I've got that on there, I'm just going to spritz the brush. Now, obviously this ferrule is now wet, so I'm going to tuck it into my knuckles and just spin it. Because you don't want moisture getting down here and loosening the glue that holds the bristles, otherwise you're going to end up with a very expensive stick. And then I'm going to pop this over the top of the peach mat that I've just put down. Dry the brush off, pick up a bit more. I'm wondering if this is going to be one of the ones that actually applies better. Yeah, this actually applies better when it's dry than when you wet it. Because it is like the Super Shock Shadow. And that's a new sting. Oh, a new photo appears to show Dubai's missing Princess Latifah. That'll be good. 
look what I have found, aren't you safe? So I'm just going to, you can of course use your finger to do this, but I've actually got nails at the moment and they're mine, so I don't want to poke myself in the eyeball. But you can see that just gives a really nice effect with the peach underneath it, just popping through. Right, now I will show you how I deal with my other eye. Um, it's more so an issue when I'm using shimmers, to be honest, rather than, than mattes, because mattes just, they, they tend to blend quite easily, but shimmers obviously are a slightly different formula. What I have to do, I have to straighten the um, lid out, otherwise what happens is um, it all settles in this, it settles loosely in these creases and then as I'm blinking through the day and moving my eyes it starts falling into my eye which is really very painful and my eyes are sensitive enough anyway. They, they weep at the slightest bit of pollen that drifts anywhere near them so yeah. So what I do is I literally just pull the lid out enough to straighten those creases and I straight away get in there as quick as I can get the pigment applied and blended and then I gently let the lid go again I don't just let it spring back and then the rest of the lid I just do in the same way that I did this side but you will notice that I get more fallout this side and the lid moves considerably more and that's damage caused over 40 years ago so please do not pull your lids around you might get away with it for a while but I promise you it will catch up with you I like that. I like that a lot, as it happens. That's really pretty. Right, my loves, I'm going to pause you while I uh, pop some foundation and whatnot on. And then I'll be back to finish off this eye look with you. Um, I've got a little while now before I can chat to you again, but for you darlings, it'll be completely instant, just like always. Hey, I'm back. Okay, I did my usual soap brows, and I used the deepest green, the Earthship, that I used here to colour the brows in. Now I'm going to go in with a little tiny brush into Nouveau which is the sort of bricky burgundy ready colour I'm just going to run that along the lower lash line I have to admit I was so excited when I saw this colour scheme I was like, oh, I need that in my life. I really need to do a declutter soon. I've got far too many, far too many um, palettes. And as you will see, I've also got a whole video about that I need to film as well. Where the last two weeks, my brain decided you can't sleep because of pain. You can't film because of pain. Do you know what would be a really good idea? Buy a load more palettes that you can't film with yet. Honestly. Pain somnia purchases, huh? Right, now I'm going to go with my Spectrum A13 brush. This is one of the ones from uh, Mean Girls Collection. It's 
butter a carb. Mm. Um, and I think I will go into how many of these have I used? I've used one, two, three, four, five. I've used six of these so far. So only three I haven't used, two of which are shimmers, one of which is a matte. So let's go into the final matte that I've not used, which is Golden Age. I'm going to use that to just buff that lower lash line. You know I wasn't going to do anything um, monochromatic, didn't you? Well, you could. You could use this for work. You could. You could really do this or the pink and just really you know blend them out it could be a one and done look for you for work but you know me I haven't played with makeup for over two weeks I've got a new colourful palette I'm going to play with it And then I think I'm going to go into Aloe Cove. Don't you love it when you get hay fever gummies in the corner of your eye? And you don't realise until you've pressed record. Right, so I'm going into Aloe Cove on this little brush. I'm just going to use that. Look at that, would you? That's my inner corner. If you're scared of colours, this is a good way to start. Choose something wafty for your inner corner. Or do a completely neutral top lid and then do something a little bit colourful on the bottom. But that, you've got to admit, folks. Bit bloody stunning, isn't it? A eh? little bit bloody stunning. Right. Mm. I think I'll grab my Ofra Samantha March highlight. This star eye, star inspired, which is half Star Island and half Pillow Talk. I'm just going to go into the Star Island bit to do my brow highlight. Oh, isn't that a little bit lush, folks? Right, I'm happy with that. I'm going to pause you one last time. I'm going to mascara, lipstick, highlight my face, setting spray myself to the gods, and I'll be back with my finished look and my initial thoughts on the palette. So, I'll see you right now. I am back. As you can see, hair was mucking me about, so I bunged a wig on. Thank you, Maz. Loving the wig. So, this is my overall look. Uh, I decided to go with Max Ruby Woo for the lips because this hair feels so 60s, the way that I've styled it with a little faux bump thing at the back, kind of... Mm, you know, sort of dusty Springfield-ish, so uh, I felt like I just needed a red lippy to go with it. But this is not about the lippy or the hair, this is about a la palette. So, well, what do I think? I have used every shade today, <laughs> except this one. Um, 
and so far I'm really loving it. Uh, I had a little bit of an issue with this initially but once I changed to a larger blending brush blended out without any issue at all. Uh, you often find that with deeper colours you need a slightly fluffier brush to, to, to completely smoke them out if that's the look you're going for. And my eye decides now is a good time to start watering. Yay! Perfect timing, thanks! So yeah, uh, do I recommend this? Yeah, if you like the colour story and it fills a gap in your collection then I would absolutely recommend it because it's performed fantastically. It's really, really pretty as well. It's it's an unusual combination of shades. You wouldn't normally see teals. You wouldn't normally see beautiful pastel teals like this with the grungy greens. But I really like that combination. Um, yeah, if you like it. Kaleidos Flower Punk from me so far gets a double thumbs up. Obviously I'm going to continue to use her off screen. If my opinion changes I will let you know. But if she's anything like the other Kaleidos palettes I doubt very much my opinion will change at all. So, if you're one of my regular viewers please double check you're still subscribed and check your notification settings YouTube are deleting people and they're knocking the notification settings back to personalised rather than all which means you're not getting anything at all um, that's true not just for me but for all of the channels that you follow so when you're watching film before you press play just double check that the subscribed is still grey and it hasn't gone back to red. If it has gone back to red, you know what to do. Mm, yes, you do. Right. If, however, you're new here and you kind of enjoyed this weird rambling thing that I do whilst applying makeup, it'd be lovely if you two would like to join the 4F family. We are the nicest family on both YouTube and the internet in general. It's super easy to do. You hit that red subscribe button that I mentioned earlier. Then you ring my bell. Ring my bell. And choose all notifications in the hope YouTube will pull their finger out and actually send you some. In the meantime, as well as a rather ample backside, I have a rather ample back catalogue you can be catching up on. Uh, there's other tutorials, there's product reviews, there's collabs, there's challenges, there's tag films. I even read in my favourite poem in one of them. So I'm sure you'll find something to interest you. So, as I've said for what feels like eons now, grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up. And just have some chill out me time with a coffee and a custard cream. Or whatever your treat of choice may be. Right my lovelies. As ever, all that remains for me to say. Is you'll stay fabulous. And I will see you next time. Bye for now.